Accuracy first, anti-cant scope level. Things that kind of set it apart are, first, that this is a bead, a ceramic bead, I believe, not a bubble. Uh, supposedly, the advantages are that it uh, responds to a greater degree of accuracy. Um, and there's, I guess, with impact, you don't have a risk of the bubble breaking up. There is a very small bubble in there uh, that if you turn it all the way over, it will pop past the bead. I don't know if you can see that, but I haven't had an instance, at least you know, in the bag, I haven't installed it yet, to where it, um, it impedes the movement. Um, it is nice, of course, it's curved so that if you're angling the rifle downwards or upwards, uh, you still have the ability to keep it level. It doesn't seem to catch um, which is really nice and uh, the big uh, benefit as well is that back here as you can see there is a little subtle rubber piece and when you remove this uh, the, this this design is not for civilian use it's for military uh, accuracy first makes this for the military um, but they uh, you can put in a tritium vial in that which I found a way to buy a tritium valve, uh, vial. So um, I'll be showing that here in a second. Um, comes in this. Uh, and I'll show you how uh, there's a link probably down below. And I'll talk about it in a second about how to get the tritium vial. Uh, but we will uh, install this and do a little review. Um, and uh, maybe a little comparison. I do have a Vortex bubble uh, anti-cant device on another rifle uh, but we're going to install this one on this mark four that I've got on a LaRue uh, device so um, some of the things we're going to be talking about um, as Todd Hartnett the uh, the man behind accuracy first uh, explains in his DVD series uh, in training sessions are that this level is level with the reticle and the reticle needs to be level with the world. It has nothing to do with the being level with the rifle. Uh, a lot of long-range precision competition shooters can't their rifles to fit better in the pocket, and a, and a subtle or a slight can't in the in the weapon system does not matter. The real importance is uh, the. Uh, the ability of the reticle to be level with the world, and that's what we're going to do uh, with this. So um, here we go. All right, so when you open it up, uh, I purchased the 34 millimeter version, which came with a 30 millimeter adapter set of rings. Uh, so it seems a little small, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then, of course, a, a little wrench, but I'm going to... Um, be using the fat wrench torque wrench uh, it's got instructions here that talk about not only how to install the scope level but also a scope talking about uh, proper eye relief cheek weld ergonomic positions that sort of thing and um, yeah so it does say whenever installing it basically tighten the screws to six to eight inch pounds of torque and reconfirm again uh, this is, um, it can be stripped by over tightening. So to me, uh, that six to eight sounds really low, but it does say that it's not meant to hold it necessarily in place. It just says that, uh, you don't, you don't want to damage the scope tube. Um, yeah, and it's just meant to hold it, resist moving. So uh, interesting uh, that I guess because it's so light it doesn't uh, move as much but uh, gosh I've I've not tightened scopes uh, well enough and they've definitely moved so six to eight just seemed really really low but um, it also on here it talks about why this level is better than others uh, specifically the ceramic ball doesn't uh, change size when with pressure differentials and then also each hash mark is 2.5 degrees so there's 10 total degrees of movement uh, so just more precise and um, and then of course it's located off to the side so that it's designed uh, for a right-handed shooter 
to be able to see it without adjusting cheek weld or shooting position. So um, I'm going to try to remove this and put the tritium uh, vial here in a second. And I'm about to talk about the tritium vial and then uh, we'll go forward. This is the packaging that the tritium vial that I ordered come, came in. Uh, let's open it up. Came from Taiwan. I used uh, the $5 shipping, I believe. Uh, some forums that I've read said that it would take about a month, um, but it took about two and a half weeks, so not bad at all. Uh, the website is mixglow.com and there are the dimensions that you can see. Let's open it up and take a look. Pretty quality, um, high quality casing. It's not gonna get damaged at all in transit. And it was vacuum sealed in this little guy. So it is ship certified mail, so you have to be there to sign for it. I was not, so I went and picked it up at the post office this morning. So you can see the dimensions. It's not a perfect cylinder. It's a little narrow, um, but it looks great. And you can see right there that it is very, very bright. So I will uh, have it installed and we'll take a look. Okay, so this is kind of tricky, but I got my knife in there and just kind of pushed on the center and eventually this side angle popped out and there we go. So now we can see that. Now let's try the tritium vial, see how it goes. This is really neat, it's super bright at night. It's even in this case, I came into the room last night when it was a little bit darker and it was glowing on the table on its own. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna to try to center it. It's maybe a little bit difficult to see, but it doesn't fit perfectly. I guess it slides a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to try to center it. I don't think it'll matter a whole lot as long as it illuminates. I can't tell if there's a front or back to this. I'm going to assume the, the larger side is the back. Okay, that's pretty close to center. And that went in real easy. And so now it's illuminated. You can see a little bit of a difference, especially whenever I close it like that or cover it up. So we'll get it installed. Yeah, you can see that great in the camera. Um, we'll get it installed and take a look. Well, I got the anti-cant scope level mounted. Um, of course, you got the tritium in there. You can kind of see the color, the illumination. Um, but I was able, it's kind of hard to see with the lighting, but I was able to get it on without removing the scope from the LaRue mount. It just barely fit in there. I uh, got it just snug um, right now. What you can do to make sure that the level is true to the reticle so that the reticle is level with the world is uh, it's recommended that either you draw a plumb line and mark that out uh, and look through the reticle and just have the... the the vertical line matched up with a, a plumb line. You can hang a string uh, somewhere in your house. I used, uh, I've got a chandelier uh, in the entryway, and so I used that, and it's pretty darn close uh, to accurate. So, um, well, I, I know it's accurate. It's just, it was a little bit difficult to see with how thin the line, the reticle was with with looking at the, uh, the it was it's a chain that hangs down for the um, chandelier. So. Uh, one thing that I need to do once I get out on the long range uh, out at the ranch is look for um, cell towers off in the distance because uh, they, uh, they, they get those pretty level. So that is what I've heard to use as a, a reference point uh, the easiest way. So that's what I plan on doing just to make sure that it's certain. Um, so I wanted to just give you a little bit of a comparison 
it's, it is difficult to see. Uh, this, you can definitely tell that the Accuracy First anti-cant device has a lot more precision than the Vortex. Now, nothing's wrong with this Vortex. It's just obviously $30 versus $100. So um, it still gets pretty close. And it's fairly visible, um, but I can tweak it, and it's still within that line. So um, I'd, I don't know how accurate it is or not. I know that each hash mark here, you know, has uh, varying degrees that are set on it. Of course, you're not going to shoot out of that. You're going to come back in. Um, so some people uh, have commented whenever they saw this on other videos saying that, well, if you can't shoot without a scope level, then you shouldn't be shooting. Uh, well, that's just ridiculous. Um, the long-range shooters that are out there all say to use a scope level. Um, they say about 50-50 whenever you just miss, normally off to the right-hand side, it's due to uh, the rifle being canted. So, of course, if you're shooting on a bench at 100 yards or at 50 yards at your local range, there's no point in having this. You're not going to see the difference. Uh, the math is for every five degrees of cant, you will miss by 0.1 mils every 100 yards. So five degrees of, of cant is actually pretty hard to tell with, the, uh, with just the, the naked eye. Um, a sp I mean, it may not necessarily be that difficult when you're looking at uh, a true flat berm at your shooting range that everything's level. But if you're actually hunting or shooting out uh, on any distance at land, it's really, really difficult to tell. Um, I know for sure I've hunted with this rifle, and I, I couldn't tell at all, even hunting out of a blind, uh, that it was level. But good thing I had the scope. Um, now, if it was just a little bit off uh, of a miss, if I didn't have this, okay. But still, I want to eliminate every variable I can. That's why I, I purchased pretty decent gear is so that I can know whether or not um, my misses are because of m the mistakes I introduced to the weapon system or um, and, I, and I don't have to worry about if I've got good rings or if I've got a good scope um, or whatnot. So um, this scope level, um, I, definitely my favorite. Uh, looks pretty, pretty neat. It doesn't stick out too far if you notice uh, past the parallax adjustment. So when I'm carrying this thing uh, i don't anticipate it hitting too much um, so um yeah feel free to ask any questions let me know i don't know if i forgot anything uh, but uh, i definitely love this this level so um thanks for watching